Okay, so in the last video we got our introduction to objects and now we're going to take that idea a little bit further. So the vectors I showed you in the last video, there's a challenge with them that they're kind of one-dimensional. So they're just a single list of things. And oftentimes we're going to want to work with information that is multi-dimensional, not just one-dimensional. So um, we're going to uh, start working with matrices and uh, more often we're going to work with things called data frames. So let's take a look at um, first how to set up a matrix and how to index the matrix, so how to call information out of the matrix. And then uh, from that point we'll uh, shift over to data frames. So here I'm going to make a new object. I'm going to call it my matrix. I'm going to use the assignment uh, symbol to, uh, so that's my new object. And now I'm going to use a function called the matrix function. And I want to populate it with the numbers 1 to 24, so 1 colon 24. And I want to make this matrix six rows long and four columns wide. Okay, so once again, nothing else shows up in the console window, but you'll notice up here in the environment window that now I have something that's labeled as data. So let's uh, just print that out to see what we got. So my matrix. Okay, so here we are. So it's filled in uh, 24 um, across each of the columns here. Okay. All right, so now um, with this matrix, how do we index when we're dealing with a matrix? So you'll notice this has a row indicator in square brackets and a column indicator in square, square brackets. So that suggests something for how we can uh, index things. So let's try my matrix. And in this case, I'm going to type in two comma, and then I'll put in a space and I'm just gonna leave it blank. Enter. Okay, so you see what that did? So it pulled up row two and the entirety of row two. So we can do the same thing with a column, if we type comma, and then let's say column three. Okay, so that's pulled up everything that is in column number three. Okay, and you know, we can get more specific also, and we could type two comma three, and that's gonna pull the value out from row two, column three. Okay, and then, you know, same trick as uh, we showed with the uh, uh, vector, we can go negative two, that's going to pull out on, um, well, let's see, so that pulled out column two, and notice that it renamed things here, so columns two and three. Okay, and um, so Okay, that's fun. We can refer to stuff by numbers, but it can also be useful to name uh, the columns. So we're going to do that um, using the following. So I'm going to use a function called call names. Okay, and then I'm going to apply this function to my matrix. And right now they don't have any names. And um, I wanted to show you something. So maybe I press return and I did it too early and I'm really annoyed <clears throat> and I don't want to have to retype everything that I had just typed. Um, one trick you can use um, is you can use the up arrow and that will call up the previous command that you used. So here's my call names. I'm going to use the assignment operator and I've got four columns so I'm going to name them the imaginative names A, B, C, and D. And you'll notice that um, I put letters in parentheses, or sorry, quotation marks. Um, uh, we'll get into why in a little bit, okay? And then uh, we can do the same thing to name the rows. So let's go row names for my matrix. And here we'll name them Mary. Jane, Brune, Hilda, Sarah, Liz, 
and Stephanie. Okay. All right. So row name. So now I'm going to just check my what I just did. Type in my matrix. Okay. Now I've got A, B, C, D, and Mary Jane, Brunhilde, Sarah, Liz, and Stephanie. Okay. And now um, instead of using uh, numbers, I can do things like use the names to refer to what I'm interested in. So if I go my matrix and type in Brunhilde, comma, and notice the quotation marks there. Okay, that's pulled out the row for Brunhilde. Okay, so that's a matrix. The downside of the matrix is that it can only handle a single type of input. So all of my inputs in this case are numbers, but in a lot of cases, we're going to want to deal with a combination of numbers and letters. Um, and so if you uh, were to read in a data set um, that has numbers and letters, it will automatically be uh, transformed into a data frame. Um, and so, and for the most part, it's possible to use data frames and matrices in the same fashion. Um, and there's one other advantage to data frames, um, which is there's a simpler way to index them um, rather than using our, our square brackets. So let's uh, try plugging in a, a data frame. So I'm going to call this my data frame. And I'm going to use a clever function here called as.data.frame. And I'm going to convert my matrix into a data frame. Or our other way of uh, saying that is I'm going to coerce the matrix into a data frame. And I'm going to assign it to the new object, my data frame, so that it's separate from my matrix. So um, just as a little preview, I could have written over my previous, my matrix uh, as a data frame, but that would be extremely confusing. So I'm not going to. OK, so here. Let's just look at my data frame. Looks very similar to my matrix. But there's an important component to that. So you notice up here in the environment, it's actually uh, described differently than how my matrix is. And that's because it is a different type of object. So it's a data frame. It is not a matrix. And um, in R, a lot of the behavior in R is driven by the type of object that you're working with, and how R handles those different types of objects. And this is going to become even more clear later on. So um, we could use the same indexing method to uh, pull stuff up from my data frame. So let you know my data frame. Um, let's take row three. So Brunhilde, my favorite. Um, but there's another thing we can do. Um, which is if I go my data frame and then I use the dollar sign symbol, you'll notice that um, RStudio is giving me some hints as to what I can put in. So let's put in B. And what this has done is it has uh, accomplished the same thing as if I were to type in my data frame column or comma B, right? But a little faster and easier to type. You know, spare your hands the typing. And, um, you know, again, you can use uh, or refer to as many columns or rows as you want using this. Um, and you can actually, um, you know, achieve the same kind of thing as we did when we were looking at parts of my matrix, right? We're looking at, let's say, rows one through three um, by doing something like the following. So let's try my matrix. And I'm going to use that concatenate function, Mary, Jane, and Brunhilde. I need to remember that comma, space. OK, same thing. And you know you don't have to go in any particular order. So you could go my matrix. And let's say you wanted the first and the fourth columns. That will give you the first and fourth columns. And here's another thing to notice. So let's try my matrix while we're here. What if we go four comma one instead? 
Okay, notice the difference in the output there. Okay, so that's taken us through our uh, quick interactive introduction. And so from watching this, one thing I suggest you do is jot down some notes about what a function looks like and the functions that we've seen so far in this video. And also jot down some notes about how you can index a matrix or a data frame. And the last thing to think about doing is uh, about operator. So an operator is a symbol that performs some specific type of action. So I think it could be useful to write a list of operators that have showed up across these interactive exercises and what they do. So to give you an example, you know, we had that arrow symbol. And I'm going to show you one other fun thing. So I typed in an arrow symbol without anything else. Um, R doesn't know what to do with it, so it's showing me an error message. And as you type, you may discover um, that you wind up getting a lot of error messages, and that's okay. Um, R is very forgiving. If you just clear out of that line, then you should be able to keep going.